Is Denmark, and in particular Copenhagen, one of the best places to live in the whole world? Well, probably, but us Danes, we really like to complain. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do today. Here are the 10 reasons why I hate, or at least dislike, living in Copenhagen, Denmark. Okay, so first off, it's just really, really expensive. And I mean, in Copenhagen, this is only exaggerated even further. Prices for homes and for renting are just really high. Like if you want to rent, let's just say a two or three bedroom apartment in Copenhagen, and you don't like have any connections, you're just a regular person, you could probably look at paying around 15,000 Danish kroner per month. So that's around $2,000. And if you go for something smaller, like a one bedroom or two bedroom apartment, I mean, if you're lucky, you can find something like nine or 10,000 Danish kroner per month. But for most people, that will still be a huge chunk of their monthly salary. And if you want to buy something, it's just also really expensive. And especially for younger people who want to buy their first home, it can be really difficult to actually get approved for a loan for that amount of money. Now, if you go outside of Copenhagen, and especially if you go like, let's say an hour or more away from Copenhagen or some of the largest cities around Denmark, rent and prices for homes get a lot more affordable. But of course, all the universities and a lot of jobs are around the big cities, so it is what it is. But it's not just prices for homes and rent that is high. It's also just everything else, buying groceries, food, experiences, like going to the movies, eating out. It's just expensive. Like the other day, I just went to grab a burger, some fries and a beer at this like hip street food-ish kind of place in Copenhagen and it cost me like 210 Danish kroner or like $30 just for that for one person. Safe to say like I don't eat out very often here in Denmark. And another great way to measure this is how much you have to pay for a latte of course. Now we actually have a pretty cool coffee culture here in Denmark and you can find a lot of awesome coffee places that make really high quality coffee but it will also cost you. So I managed to get myself a cup of coffee here at this place called Dallas, just around the corner here. It's just a small little coffee place, and it is actually really good. But I guess the problem is it was 45 Danish kroner, so that's like six to seven dollars. And like, I mean, in most of the coffee places, that is just the price for coffee here in Copenhagen. It is just really expensive. Now, of course, to be able to afford all of this, Danes also get a pretty high salary. And my next video will actually be about like how much people get paid here in Denmark, especially in just like normal jobs. And we're gonna have a look at a lot of real examples and real pay slips from a lot of different people just to see how much people make. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that as well. The weather in Denmark is pretty sad. Most of the year it's just cold, gray and rainy. I mean, now it's summer. It's just been raining for the past few days. And it's kind of cold. When the weather is nice though, it's really amazing. And especially in Copenhagen, it's just a completely different vibe. And the city really comes alive. But usually summertime in Denmark is really awesome. We got like very long days. So the sun rises really early and sets super late. So these like very late evenings and long sunsets, it's just beautiful. But it's that other like three quarter of a year that's problematic. Like let's say you just have a normal job during the winter when you meet at your job, it's dark. And then when you're off and go home, it's dark again. So it's just sad. And winter depression is a real thing here in Denmark. And now me and my girlfriend spent quite a few years just traveling the world, especially in warmer countries because the bad weather is just really a big part of why I don't like living in Denmark. Now, if we're lucky, May until September, it can be kind of nice. Of course, it depends a lot, especially on how much it rains during those months. But then from October until April, it just really sucks. Now, the next thing that I really don't like about living here in Denmark is that I think that the nature here in Denmark is kind of terrible. Now, like in Copenhagen, you just have a lot of parks, which I guess is fair since it's, I mean, it's just a big city. But even then, like going outside the city, you don't really have a lot of like cool places in nature to go to on a trip or just to relax and, or get, escape into nature. And like what we do have is kind of boring. So let me explain. So. Denmark is flat, like really, really flat. Like we have no mountains or anything like that or any cool landscapes. So things like going on a hike just kind of sucks because you don't really have that 
pay off at the end that grand vista or awesome viewpoint that you hike up to. You just hike through a trail or alongside a road or something. It's just boring. And the second thing is that we don't have like a lot of forest here in Denmark. I think the number of like the area amount covered of the country is like 15%, which may sound like a lot, but probably a lot of it is like for like lumber mills or whatever, or it's just like a lot of small patches here and there, which you can't really go into or use as a forest, just as a normal person. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm not really in Copenhagen filming this video today. And that's because I want to show you the real issue that I have with the nature here in Denmark. So I've come today to the island of Møn, which is actually an area of Denmark that has a lot of awesome nature, at least compared to other parts of the country. But it's also just really good at demonstrating the issue that I have. So this right here, this is how most of the nature looks like in Denmark. I know it might look a little bit idyllic and peaceful, you know, a little bit of rolling hills and grass, but in my opinion, it's also just really boring because if you go outside of the cities this is exactly how it looks like everywhere and also consider that we are now in summer and it's also about like being sunset time so it does look perhaps a little bit nicer but look 60 percent of denmark is covered in farms and fields just like this one here 60 percent of our whole country like that's to me that's insane amount like compared to our neighbors Norway and Sweden, the number is like 5% or something. Of course, they're much bigger countries, so we can't really compare. But still, if you want to be in nature, 60% of our country is just covered in fields that are pretty boring and that I, as just a normal guy, can't really enjoy. I mean, I can't go out and for a hike or have fun in the fields or something like that. So to me, that really sucks. Nature is really boring because it's just fields that cover most of our country. In Denmark, we have rules about everything. And I mean, of course, that can be a good thing, but we're also just very, very strict with those rules. Like if you have a parking ticket and you go just a minute or two over the time you've, that you've put in, you'll get a fine. But what I dislike even more is that us Danes, we really care if other people are following the rules. Honestly, we're just a bunch of little snitches. <laughs> Did you spot your neighbor putting the food waste in the cardboard trash can? Oof, he's in big trouble, but we're also not like very confrontational here in Denmark. So instead of actually going over to the neighbor and saying, hey, you put the trash in the wrong bin. No, no, we'll call up the municipality and actually like on him and hope that they will take action. And again, it's probably a good thing in many cases, but personally, I just like things being a bit more relaxed. Okay, so in Denmark, we have this thing called Jantelon, or the law of Jante, which is not really a law, it's more of an unwritten rule or unofficial rule or how you want to put it. I mean, at this point, it's basically just a part of our culture. And the basic of the idea of this Jantelon is that you should not think that you're special. You should not think that you're better than anyone else, that you're smarter than anyone else. So not really stand out in any way. And again, sure, that can be fine and it probably helps create a society where we are a bit more equal or have equal opportunity. But I mean, we aren't all the same, but we are kind of then through our culture just really, really taught to fit in. So if you are different and you show it, that's not often a good thing. Like we don't like people bragging about their achievements or what they've accomplished or something. You know, people should keep that to themselves. So it also really creates this weird relationship we have in Denmark with successful people. Like for example, we are not very great at celebrating entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. And so if someone has built a successful business and perhaps made a lot of money, it's always a bit like, eh, she probably inherited some money or knew someone, got lucky, or perhaps did something illegal. Because standing out like that is just not necessarily seen as a good thing. And that I think really comes down to how this Yandelon is kind of implemented in our culture. And I think this Yandelon also plays kind of a big part in just 
making sure that everyone in Denmark is basically the same person. Like we all wear the same clothes, we all listen to the same music and have whatever hobby is popular at the time. Just follow all the trends and talk about the things that are trending and that you should care about. Because if you do something that's a little bit different and outside the norm, that's a little weird. And people might mock you, might even bully you for doing it. Like, just for being yourself. And so everyone just tries to fit in and everyone ends up being exactly the same. And that's just a little bit boring. And of course it also sucks if people have to like hide who they really are or you know, they don't do the thing that they would actually want to do just because it would be a little weird for other people. It can be a little bit hard in Denmark making new friends. I think this is especially true for foreigners coming to live here. Generally us Danes are known for like being pretty cold and like hard to get to know. And that is true like but once you get to know a Dane you know we are very open and very warm and welcoming. But it is that initial step that's hard to breach I guess. Like it's very normal that people are just you know make friends through school university and their job and then they just stick with those friends like if you are a foreigner or 29 year olds and you know want to make new friends it's really not that easy i think the best option is to somehow become part of something like that's when it's easiest to like get to know us things so like do some sports or doing some activity where you'll be in the same room as with the same people several times. Like that's basically how you make friends in Denmark. But I think another explanation of this is just Danes are just super busy all the time. Of course, all people are different, but generally Danes are just really, really busy with themselves. Which again, might not be a bad thing, but it just makes it hard to get to know someone new if they barely have time to see you. So this one I think is kind of funny. Like we have this weird self image here in Denmark. And I think like one good example of this is how we see ourselves in regards to sustainability. Like that is a real important thing for Danes. And if you kind of go online and read a little bit, what is Denmark known for? Sustainability. And if you ask Danes what they care about, it's sustainability. But at the same time, like per capita, we have like a really, really high like CO2 emissions. We buy so much useless crap, like a new phone every year, new clothes, throw it away. Now all the rage is this uh, Timu, like just cheap products from China. Like, let's go, let's go. We love it. And sure, we probably do a lot of good things in general for the environment and for sustainability, but like, it's not enough to keep up with all those agreements the politicians have made, like Paris Agreement or whatever they're called. And that's not a point. Like, we see ourselves as like an example. Because we're such a small country, it often comes up like, hey, okay, doesn't really matter what we do. You know, the pessimist will say, but then, you know, the people who really care about sustainability will go, yeah, but we have to lead by example so others can follow in our footsteps. But I mean, ah, I don't think we're doing that great to begin with to really be an example. So what I'm saying is, I think that in Denmark, we really perhaps overrate ourselves a bit. Like we really think we are awesome and amazing. And in some parts, I'm sure we are, but we're perhaps not that great. We have so many taxes. Now, of course, we touched on, you know, we have free healthcare, free education, a pretty good welfare system. Nice. All of that, of course, comes at a cost that we pay quite a lot of taxes. We do have a very high, like, income tax. Generally, it's probably around, like, 50%. Of course, it varies depending on exactly how much you make and so on. And most Danes actually happily pay their taxes. They think, yeah, you know, they can see the value that you get back from what you're paying. But my problem lies more with is the amount of taxes because it's not just income tax we have a lot of different taxes on everything and also some of them are just plain stupid so you know we have a vat of like 25 percent on all products and services we have different taxes on different kind of products sugar alcohol and so on like cars have a pretty high tax and one stupid example here is how i don't know like 20 or 30 years ago they built a big bridge in denmark to connect the country i mean awesome so the way the government financed this bridge was, was to take out a loan to build the bridge and then the idea was to have people pay to cross the bridge and over time that amount money would 
pay back the loan. And once the loan was paid back, the price of crossing the bridge would be reduced just to, you know, to keep the bridge operational and for maintenance and so on. But later on, the government actually found out that this bridge makes quite a lot of money. So instead of just paying back the loan, the government could take the money in this bridge company that the state owns and use that for other infrastructure projects. How smart is that? So today, the price of crossing the bridge hasn't gone down. And essentially, it's just a, a hidden tax because the government then uses the money of crossing the bridge for projects that they would normally use our taxes on. So kind of a hidden tax that really targets, you could say, a certain group that I guess lives in that area or crosses the bridge regularly. Okay, those were really all the reasons I have for, well, perhaps hate is a strong word here. Hopefully you can take all of this with a grain of salt. I mean, there is a reason why I do still live here and not in another country. I do really like it here. And I'll probably make a video about more of the positives later on. But one of those positives about living in Copenhagen is that it's just an amazing city and you should watch this video right here if you want to get a bit of a I guess travel guide to Copenhagen and just see a little bit what the city has to offer and some good things to know about visiting Copenhagen.